-hmm. Let's talk about the fundamental rules of dimensioning and tolerancing. This is ASME Y14M-1994, page four, section 1.4, fundamental rules. There's rules A through N. I'm not gonna read every single one of them. I'll just summarize what they are. These rules are very useful to know because they're kind of a framework on which the rest of the dimensioning tolerancing book uh, rests. Everything in the book follows these rules. There's exceptions in the rules, but you know, there's exceptions in the book. The first one, each dimension shall have a tolerance. So this doesn't always mean, you know, you're gonna have a dimension plus or minus whatever. It could be directly tolerance, it could be a geometric tolerance, it could be a title block tolerance, or if it's a stock material, it could be tolerance in some handbook like pipes or lumber. B states that dimensioning and tolerancing shall be complete, so there's a full understanding of every feature. Scaling, as in measuring, a piece of paper and trying to figure out what size it is is not allowed. Neither is guessing what a distance should be. Rule C, each necessary dimension of the end product shall be shown. No more dimensions than are necessary shall be shown. So this is the genesis of the double dimensioning rule. You shouldn't have two dimensions on the same thing. The next, D, Dimensions shall be selected and arranged to suit the function of the part and shall not be subject to more than one interpretation. This is a very, very important rule when it comes to the relationship between designing and manufacturing. Manufacturing will come back and say that the part needs to be designed to be manufactured. Designs will say the part needs to be designed as to how it's gonna function. It says right here that it should be designed based on function. That doesn't mean it's always true. You'll find that sometimes you have to make allowances for manufacturing. You have to change datum schemes and change tolerances for things to be made economically. Rule E, and this is a very important one. This is kind of new in the last 50 years or so. The drawing should specify the part without specifying a manufacturing method. So when you look at older drawings, it's very common to see things like quarter inch hole ream, half inch hole drill, three quarter inch hole punched. That is, that is not standard practice anymore. It is allowed if there's an overriding reason that something has to be manufactured in a certain way. But anytime you specify manufacturing, you're really tying the hands of whoever's actually gonna make it. In the drafting room, you don't necessarily know every possible machine that's out there. They come up with new manufacturing processes all the time. So they might take your part and put it on an EDM machine. They might take it and water jet. They might plasma cut it. You don't wanna specify that it has to be milled when the company might have a cheaper, better way to make it they will figure out how to make it based on the tolerances you put on the part. Rule F, this is a, a kind of funny one. It is permissible to identify as non-mandatory certain processing dimensions that provide for finish allowance, shrink allowance, and other requirements, provided the final dimensions are given. So this is just letting somebody know, you went ahead and did the math, this is where you should start, but this is where you have to end. They have to have the final dimensions on the part. This is non-mandatory, just for information. Rule G, this is important. Dimensions should be arranged for optimum readability. Dimensions should be shown in true profile views and refer to visible outlines. So you'll hear me talk all the time about how you should not dimension to hidden lines. This is why. It's one of the fundamental rules that you should not that you should refer to visible outlines. So that means using a section view when you have a complicated internal feature instead of dimensioning to hidden lines. And the true profile views part, that is telling you to make your views the most descriptive of the feature you're dimensioning. Rule H, wires, cables, sheets, rod, and other materials manufactured to gauge or code numbers shall be specified by linear dimensions indicating 
the diameter or thickness. Gauge or code numbers should be shown in parentheses following the dimension. So what this means is that if you have a drawing of some sheet metal, you can put 22 gauge, but you need to put the actual dimension of the sheet. You'll have the actual dimension, I don't know what 22 gauge is, say 30 thou, and then in parentheses, 22 gauge to let the whoever's gonna make it know, hey, this is what I mean. You know, I'm not specifying you go make some special thickness of sheet metal. The reason is that if you don't specify what kind of sheet metal or where your handbook is, there's a whole bunch of different thicknesses for say 22 gauge sheet metal. It matters whether it's aluminum, brass, stainless, steel, and then where you get it from. Do you get it from the US, Canada, wherever? So if you specify the actual dimension, whoever's making it can go find it and use the correct thing. Rule I, a 90 degree angle applies where center lines and lines depicting features are shown on a drawing at right angles and no angle is specified. This just means if you draw a square box, you don't have to dimension the angles 90 degrees. The tolerances for those angles on a plus minus dimension drawing will come from their general tolerances. This goes to the next rule, so what if it was geometrically dimensioned and toleranced? Rule J, a 90 degree basic angle applies where center lines of features in a pattern or surfaces shown at right angles on the drawing are located or defined by basic dimensions and no angle is specified. The geometric tolerance for that basic angle will come from wherever, whatever geometric tolerances are on the surfaces. So if it's a profile, that angle will be used up by the profile. Rule K, all dimensions apply at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Inspection rooms are typically that temperature. If they're greater or lower, uh, the inspector has to make an allowance for that temperature. Rule L, all dimensions apply in a free state condition. All this means is that when you're inspecting, you can't bolt things down to the table and put tension on them to pull them into the correct dimension. You have to put it on the table and measure around it. Rule M, Unless otherwise specified, all tolerances and dimensions apply for the full length, breadth, and width of a feature. And then rule N, dimensions and tolerances only apply at the drawing level that they were specified. What this means is that if you have an assembly with detail parts, the most of the dimensions and tolerances are on the detail parts. You'll have an assembly drawing. You don't inspect the assembly drawing again. You don't have to inspect every part in the assembly after it's assembled. There might be some overall dimensions, but you don't require whoever's making it to inspect things, detail part and piece part form and an assembly form.